slide, trigger, holster. What up YouTube, Gunner South again. I'm gonna do a uh, short video I think today on uh, some new gear that I got specifically for the competition shooting that I'm doing. I'm doing currently only IDPA shooting. Uh, I've talked about it a little bit over in my other videos. You can check those out if you want. Um, gonna be doing more of those videos in the future as I feel like uh, sport could always use more recognition. And I think that's what people on YouTube are want to watch. Um, so, one of the cool things about um, competition shooting uh, is one of the things that well, you, the people do is they will actually record their shooting with uh, a GoPro or what have you. And I have been doing that as well. You might have seen some of my other videos that I've been doing, um, specifically around that para. That I've been reviewing and this is what I have been using uh, up until this point to record my shooting now this is a great setup first off it's a GoPro Hero I think it's one of the early ones it might be the Gen 1 it is in a uh, waterproof case with the forehead mount uh, been using it been using it for over year and a half or more uh, never had any problems with the straps or anything never had any problems with the GoPro itself it's always performed great uh, especially if I remember to charge the battery um, takes your standard SD cards got your uh, typical plug-ins for battery and HDMI and streaming takes your video your uh, SD card right there you turn it on and then you record. That's the only really function I've even bothered to do with it. It's in 1080p and it works great. Um, but I was watching uh, YouTube videos and what I came across when I was watching YouTube videos is a... Well, let me come back to this real quickly. It, the, the downside to this, of course, is that it's forehead mounted. And it's, it's the top of your forehead, so you're always your point of view is always more of a top-down grip kind of view as so um, you're not seeing when you go to reload everything sort of disappears and comes back up and then you're getting the uh, you get sort of a this angle if you will you get more of the top-down on the gun kind of perspective it does help um, but you're not getting <laughs> You're looking, it's, it's more like a first person shooter I guess I would say or at least like the more doom Wolfenstein kind so I was looking around online looking at people's shooting videos just because that's what I do and I came across these what are these well they look like regular safety glasses but they are not they are in fact uh, pivot head um, glasses and I don't know if you can see that logo pretty good but it is wearable imaging so what does that mean well it means that the camera is right here means that the camera is right off the bridge of your nose and it is in 1080p uh, comes in a nice little case here uh, what have you it's just the packaging it comes with the K the carry thing it comes with the almost like iPhone-esque type minimalist instructions and things like that um, it's pretty intuitive to use um, and the biggest benefit of these um, is that I, there's not much to, to, to do to get these things to run when you're wearing them at a match, right? Uh, I mean, they're a little thick on the sides, you can see there. And, um, but, you know, compared to your typical safety glasses, I mean, you, you're not setting any fashion statements, right? I mean, these are actually the ones I wear while I reload uh, due to the federal primers you should always wear. Uh, 
eye, eye protection even while you reload. But these, um, these are the Durango version. Uh, there's, they actually make a um, safety glasses version, so I'm probably not getting as much protection as I need to out of these. Um, but we don't shoot steel, and I'm not. I've never been splashed back at the competition. What I'm doing, so I'm feeling okay about that right now. Um, but the main advantages of these is here's your controls. This is the only controls you have right here: uh, start video, stop video. Take a three that's taking pictures, like it takes a burst of pictures, one, two, three, and then one, two. I think if you hold it down, it'll take one picture per second per 16 seconds or something like that. I'll try and update that information. You can find all this information on their website. Um, but there's your power button, too. So when you're wearing these, you get kind of this perspective, and so. One of the nice things you can do is you can turn it on and just out of the corner of your eye, rather than having to take this whole damn thing off and be like, is that button on? You know, I, I, and once it's on your forehead, what do you do? I mean, you, you can't flip it down and look at it. You have to sort of like take it off and look at it and figure out, uh, you know, am I in the right mode? Is this thing on? Is that button flashing? You can't do all those things once it's on. People are still shooting, so it's hard to know what the status of your GoPro is. This, it's on. Power. What you can do is you're kind of wearing it more like that. You can sort of look in the corner of your eye and see that it's on. Um, uh, or kind of pull them out and see. And then when you actually record video, you can uh, push this, again, that button right there, press it. It kicks it off, and you can kind of just like you're wearing them, pull it out. I see that that's flashing, so I know I'm recording. You're good to go. So the use of these is ultra simplistic, and that is a huge advantage when you're really trying to get ready for your stage. You're really trying to get ready to, to shoot. You don't really want to be worried about your, your camera. Um, so with these things on, you just uh, turn them on and go. Um, I will uh, show some more video. I've actually worn these for a couple weeks now, and you can see the, um, the videos they are. The greatest advantage, of course, is that you don't get a down. You don't get this angle while you're wearing them because that would require that you know it'd be so. But it's over the middle of your eye. So if you're a right eye dominant guy, you get kind of this this view. It's a little above. Um, but if you're coming around a right handed barricade and you're turning your whole thing, you'll actually get kind of this view, and it's it's a hell of a lot better. And you can see when you do your reloads, it's more of like a right here angle. By the way, that's empty. So you get more of this, this like right there when you're shooting. You can see the action a little bit more. I mean, it's a little further out. Don't get me wrong. Watch the videos, but it is a more down the sights picture than any other GoPro that I've seen, any other video recording thing that I have seen. So for that, it's great. Shooters ready. Stand by. camera is video quality is about the same as a GoPro right at least my first generation one which means it's 1080 it's a little grainy they actually offer the um, a 720p resolution at a higher refresh so 1080p at 30 or 720 at 60 and the 720 at 60 looks a lot better but uh, it, it actually narrows your field of vision from about, you know, sort of a fisheye angle to a little bit more narrow. And I never really run it because I'm always afraid that uh, I'll miss the action. And that, that is the other big, that's, so, so I've talked about how good it is. Let's talk about where it could be improved. One, all right, you see where this thing is located. Uh, 
one of the things that you have or could run into, and I, I did a little bit, is that when you're shooting this thing, if you like to tactical turtle, if you like to put your head down a lot and while you're shooting you like to really, you know, sh shrug your shoulders and dip your head, there's a there's potential you'll get this angle. There's potential that you'll be looking at your forearms because rather than looking down the sights like you should, sort of like that, you're actually sort of hunching your head and so the whole camera is being tilted down. So if you're not careful, you'll actually be looking down at your forearms rather than sort of above your gun where you're supposed to. If you keep your face flat and not tilted forward, you're going to be okay. So keep that in mind. Um, Jerry uh, Micklick says to shoot flat face. Uh, so I actually took that as sort of a wake up call to stop doing the tactical turtle. If I, if I didn't get it in view, it was my own fault because I, you know, bowed up too much because that's not sustainable. All right, this is uh, the same 3.9 tight group through a uh, Glock 41. Five ninety. Six twenty eight. So that's six sort of one downside is that with this, you know, you can adjust. You can go up, down, however you want to do. I usually left it up high. I'd get more of the top. But you know, depending upon the shooter, you can put it on a bill of a hat, whatever. This is more of a fixed angle. Like you're wearing these, that's what you get. Um the other thing that I had an issue with them is when this came it had regular sing sunglass lenses. So I wanted to get the clear which you see already installed. So I had an order from them. Um, I ordered more lenses for them and the lenses themselves were like I don't know, 25 bucks. I'll have, to, I'll have to remember that. I'll have to get that information back out. I, but the, the lenses themselves were actually reasonably priced. What got me was the damn shipping was like $13 on this. And this is what it came in. I mean, you tell me that this is a $13, $13 worth of packing. I mean, it, it just didn't make sense and it pissed me off quite a bit. Uh, I, I went in and did it anyways because I really wanted the lenses and I wanted them quick. But I mean, you're not paying, it's not like they're super padded or even like they took a lot of, a lot of time on I mean, This is just throw some lenses in a box and ship it. And so that's, that's irritating. The company itself appears to have some sort of, uh, you know, you'll read reviews on these things about probably some of the early versions having uh, sort of the, the issues with uh, them basically bricking. Um, I have had one instance already where they needed to be reset. Um, so, you know, I've only had this for like, I guess, three or four weeks. And I've only been shooting with it for, call it, uh, three weeks. Uh, and I've already had to reset it once and I'm missing one shooting video. Now, is that a deal breaker? Mm, not for me. As long as they keep working and it's not a regular occurrence, I'll put up with it. Because it's just so much simpler and easier than dealing with the GoPro. Right? How oh, well I forgot to charge the battery. Oh, I forgot to to um, bring the SD card. Right? Because this, you see the whole thing's right here. If you charge the glasses, the memory's internal. So when you're ready to get your video out, you uh, pop this loose and you plug it into your computer and you download the video. Put this back. Put it back in your range bag and you're good to go. And so for that perspective until this thing proves to be unreliable I'm gonna keep using it and I'm very happy with it so far uh, your mileage may vary they aren't any more or less expensive than a GoPro they run about $200 um, and they have a ballistic uh, safety glasses version too that you might want to check out uh, but I just want to do a quick review of uh, the pivot head glasses Durango model that I've been using for the last couple of weeks for shooting and shooting in IDPA. Um, I, I, my local club guys have already been talking with it. I think I've sold a couple pairs already. Just do, just do to the angle in which you are looking on the gun. And if you'll follow the links, or maybe I'll put it at the end of this video, you'll see what I'm talking about. So uh, go ahead and subscribe, like if you don't mind. Uh, I'll keep making these videos if you keep watching them. Thanks, guys.